are here today with Western at, at Western Johanna's uh, amazing garden farmlet almost in Encinitas and West Lettingwell has an amazing Nepali orchard and Karen and I were walking by his garden about was it six months ago mm -hmm. and we looked over the fence being snoopies that we are and we saw this incredible Nepali orchard which was a lot smaller back then it's probably what, tripled in size since yeah then, yeah think? easily yeah. easily tripled, tripled. Easily, yeah and so we came in and talked to West he was very gracious he gave us some pads he talked a lot about it I was very excited and we've agreed to shoot this video where West is going to give a lot of information on what's involved when you grow an orchard of Nepales this is in Southern California so West um, when did you first plant them it was about two and a half years ago mm -hmm. and you mentioned earlier that you literally put one pad straight in the ground yes there there are some right there oh, that right. are just okay. newly planted yeah you see the, the how long ago did you plant these uh, those were put in uh, let's see probably about four and a half months ago five months ago okay how long before they put out their first uh, pad uh, these, this lone one there, as an example, it probably won't put out a pad until, let's say, June of of 17. Really? But they're putting out a lot of roots. Yes, they're establishing a foundation. They put out the roots first, like a lot of desert plants. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And one of the things you might notice, some of these leaves on the ground here, those have been clipped off of the plant uh -huh. uh, to encourage it to throw out the the new leaves. And, and uh, along about in, in middle of January or February, we're going to go and clean it up so that there are rows. Right. It pays to have rows. Now that bunch of plants over there toward the corner, those were planted and not touched or particularly pruned or trimmed or anything uh -huh. because it could get around the whole group right. to take the leaves. Sure, sure, sure. But, uh, now I notice there's no tuna or fruit on these. No. Um, the reason being? Well, you know, these plants have yet to produce any of them. I have some older ones up back right. that they're really huge plants, yeah. and they produce, they produce the fruit. Now, we discussed earlier some of the conditions for fruit, and uh, what would they be? Well, generally, it's in the warmer part of the year that they come on, and then they'll probably mature, the ones that I've seen on my plants and other people's plants, they mature toward the end of the year, October, November, December, in that area. Mm -hmm. We used to go to Mexico all the time, and uh, we used to harvest the, the fruit. Right. And what, what in, that, in this October period. You'd harvest it to bring it back and eat it, you mean? Yeah, we'd do that. We'd eat it there. And, and the shelf life would be how long? Well, if you keep them cool, not cold, but cool, probably at least two weeks. Well, all of these varieties look quite similar with the exception of a group up there. Uh, the, the, the selection of the plants, I allowed the gardener to choose because he works with these plants all the time. And he probably planted what he and his wife like. I right, <laughs> wouldn't be a sure. bit surprised. Cool. <laughs> But uh, uh, I can't really tell the difference between these leaf shapes and so on because they're all quite similar. Some of the leaves are a little thinner, but uh, there was one difference that the, the little worms love the certain plants, and I know that those are different. <laughs> now, I, I noticed one interesting thing, and this is a particular concern for planting more inland California. When the Aponte puts out its first growth pad, it has these little prickles on it. And yes. by the third tier or third generation, there's very there's very, there's just still a few, but you know, I can carefully rub my finger on it, but by the fourth generation they all would have fallen off. Would that be correct? Well, not necessarily. Some do and some don't. I have some like I said, I have some older plants up and back that uh but I, I'm the, talking the, about your selected varieties. The, the older leaves like this one here, for instance. Uh -huh. Now, there aren't any you on see, that that I can see. see. Uh, yeah, yeah, these knock off. They're not but that big one on the bottom where it came from, yeah. there aren't any on that one. Exactly. Is, that's, what you're, that's what you're referring yeah, to. Exactly. 
But the interesting thing here is you've got the spikes on the outside of the pad, right? Which is good if you want to keep deer away from eating them because a, a, an animal can't get its mouth into the flat part. But if you, I've seen varieties where the spikes are on the outside, so the raccoons and the deer can't chew away on them. Yeah, the only predators we have here are rats. Really? Okay. And they they uh, they like they will chew the edge right. of the plant. Right. Uh, particularly if there's some small baby little baby leaves coming, they'll they la they'll eat those. Yeah. I haven't had a huge problem with that, but uh, you know, a friend of mine, I gave three pads that you gave to me to him. He planted them. The first generation that came off, he was just too curious, so he took it off, and he said it was raw, just like in a salad. It was. He was amazed. He sent this long email just raving about how delicious it was. Yes, you do you need to take them young if you're going to he, he was not going to cook them. Yeah, well, young ones for the salad, though, or as yeah. the older ones for cooking? Yes, yeah, yes. Exactly, exactly. That's yeah, exactly. You'd, you'd want to have them probably for the salad. These, when they first come out, have flexible little spines right. on them. Right, yeah. And they cut off nicely and very right. easily, but they... Now, now, th so in other words, one like this would be for cooking, and a salad would be a bit smaller than that, do you think? Yes, but right. not a lot. This, this one isn't even actually big enough for cooking. Really? You go, what, wait till it gets to about that size? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Six, eight so inches. We, well, we won't talk about cooking at this stage, because we have yep, got right. such a wealth of information <laughs> about um, how to grow a successful Apuntia orchard. Well, the, the, the orchard... <laughs> Got started on one of your favorite subjects, lack of water. Yeah, right. So right. Uh, I, uh, the city of Encinitas, we, we should talk about regulations and whatnot because it's not real complicated. Absolutely. But when I started growing these plants, the avocado trees, this was an avocado grove at one time, but diseases have just taken all of the avocados out of the area. And so I wanted to plant something that would be productive. And... <laughs> Cactus are minimum maintenance. Uh, the one problem with them, of course, is to have a market for the product once you've uh, obtained it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, this got started because I, they threatened to take away my agricultural meter. Right. And I have about an acre and three quarters here. Mm -hmm. uh, and the difference between the regular water meter and the irrigation water meter is a half-speed gear in the box mm -hmm. so that you get a, a better rate. Low rate and yeah. the city of Encinitas had no regulations for minor use land like this. Right. Well, I went through trying to register and I got I had to go through the Coastal Commission. It was very complicated. So I just kind of like gave up and said, well, and I'm very fortunate I have a city council member living across the street so I can keep my and he was on the water board so right. I can keep my hand on the uh -huh. pulse of what's going on and he was advising me of what to do and lo and behold this year they came up with regulations for minor land use and uh, so now they have an application you get a, a permit for minor land use it's a one-time fee it's not complicated. The paperwork is ridiculous but other than that sure. it's not and then that's the end of the harassment. Perfect. And so, so you're paying less per gallon, as it were. It for the be. water, yeah, it, with an agricultural meter, but Perfect. you have to qualify. Perfect. Now, how often do you water? This kind it of depends upon what I get from the sky. Yeah. If it's in the summertime, uh, you got to water every two weeks if you're going to harvest. Right, right. And it, 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 it takes uh, I water. I have little uh, sprinklers that spew out. Uh, I water... Uh, an hour to an hour and a half. I'll go out and stick a thing in the ground and see how far down the water oh, is, is penetrated. Yeah, yeah, That's that makes very sense. easy to do. Now, I, I'm imagining that cacti roots stay within three inches of the topsoil, right? Yeah, that's about Balance. right. They yeah. put out a fibrous Right, it's a network. Right, exactly. So that water meter is a really good way of monitoring it. And now if you didn't water them at all, now they're established you just wouldn't get nearly as much harvest. Right, and the, and the leaves would be thin and, yeah. and, and corrugated like yeah. that. They wouldn't yeah. have, they wouldn't be plump. Right, exactly. They would be like a new leaf coming on. Exactly. Now, I, I, with thicker pads, you sometimes get an excess of 
product in the inside that you don't want to eat. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I, that mostly, well, of course, the amount of water and, and how much, even in the new leaves, if the new leaves are starving for water, they're, they, they kind of, the leaves don't stand up, they kind of tilt over, and right. they're very corrugated. Right. And uh, not, not at all tasty. Mm -hmm. They're bitter if they don't have enough water. Interesting. So, in other words, this is a very important point because one of the ways that I differentiate the edible from the non-edible, and we'll, we'll do it shortly, is I literally take a new pad, break it in half, and bite into right. it. Right. And if it tastes bitter or soapy, I go, nah, it's not good. But you're saying if it's dehydrated, it's going to taste pretty bad. It'll, yeah, it won't be pleasant. And it'll be fibrous, too, because obviously there isn't water yeah. between the tissues. Very interesting, very important to know, because... That's, I've told people, hey, just bite it off and bite it. But you're saying it's got to be well hydrated. Right. It tastes good. Not overdone, but at least right. adequate so that the leaves look as those would there, that they're not big plump leaves, but they're, they're, they're filled, you can tell. Your, your harvest period during the year for commercially be viable pads is for how long and which months of the year? I would say for sure between April and October. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's like a five month window? Five or six months, five or yeah. Six months. And that's because you've got five varieties in Nepali? Right. The, no, I don't have any of the ones that are edible all year long. Well, perhaps this variety right here. Right. The, 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 the ones with the thorn. Actually, there's four different varieties of the thorny ones in there. Wes, you say that this one is harvestable 12 months of the year. Yes. And I've talked to several uh, people from Mexico who know about this cacti and have told me exactly the same thing. And to me, this is extremely exciting. And yes. literally, if I, say, break off, I break off one without a pad tuna growing on it, but if I break this off and bite into it, it's going to taste okay. Yeah. You think? Break it up. Yeah. Okay. Check it out. So I've got... Now... Again, this has no spikes, proving it by rubbing it on my <laughs> chest. <laughs> it's a bit of a back scraper. <laughs> but anyway, now I'm going to break it in half. And you can see it's a fairly thin pad. And if I drop down, I do want to drop down on the spiky one. See, that's good, great in salad. It really does. Great in you know, salad. I was thinking about I might have to ask and go, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, it's just, but, you know, that tastes okay. I know. That really is okay. And uh, it's mind-boggling to think that this is a food source 12 months of the year. You know, give me a crop that does that. <laughs> Name a vegetable or fruit tree that... And the maintenance is very low. Well, Probably the highest maintenance is when you get it in the, the varieties with the stickers on them, it's pulling the stickers out. That'd be the highest. Right, right. <laughs> well, and, and you only really need the stickers if you're in an area that's not fenced that has deer or has, say, a huge number of rats or, or possums or raccoons that discover it. Yeah, two-legged rats don't bother. Four-legged rats <laughs> do. Okay, you've got to watch out for those two-legged rats. <laughs> And I, I'm sure kangaroos would like this, too. Oh, you don't have that problem. Yummy. <laughs> As we look at this prolific, dense uh, variety of the same genre of Apuntia, some have spikes and some don't. Now, do you still harvest them on the spikes or you just can't be bothered? Oh, yeah, we harvest them, yeah. You eat them yourself? Yeah, w these, these actually w w we use personally. I mean, she doesn't bother with this variety is because of the spikes on them, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, she has taken some, but she uses them for her household too. So, wow. but these wow. are these are great cacti, unless you have to manage. And, and this is a beautiful ornamental. It's a dark green, glossy leaf. The yeah. tuna is not worth bothering with. It probably has a lot of seeds in it or something. Yes. It? Yeah. But there, you can see them coming there. Yeah. The nice thing about the tuna on this one is they're not spiky either, whereas most of them I've always found them to be spiky. And, uh, yeah, they go red, but I don't see the seeds in them yet. But really interesting. This is a very, very exciting... Uh, we'll put the name of this on the video. So... This is what, about a quarter of an acre you've got planted here? Yes. Right. 
and and then there's a piece over on the uh, over to the south and this up here has been filled in too so it's, yeah that's about a, a quarter of an acre here and then I can, I can see even though you live about 500 yards from the coast so you've got the cool inversion layer coming in which isn't perfect for cacti you don't have enough heat to really make it thrive but obviously yeah. thrive well but from a commercial harvest point of view even a quarter of an acre just in pads how many thousand pounds a year of, of product yeah I, that's one thing i have not kept track of is how what the weight of it is right uh when when they're harvested it's their buckets full right I, w I okay. I'll just I'll just throw out a, a wild, uneducated guess. But looking at this, I could easily see five or six thousand pounds of pads a year. Easily. Possibly, I would say by the, by the third year. One harvest, uh, one harvest, probably one pass through when they're really producing. It produces probably about eight buckets full, and if they were weighed, it would probably weigh near a couple hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can, I mean, this, these are heavy, large vegetables, basically. Exactly. And uh, and then, of course, fruits are a bonus if you live in a slightly hotter climate than here. Then when we cook them, we dethorn, despine, de cut them in strips, and chop them into, into pieces about that long. Really, yeah. And about that wide. Uh-huh and uh, put them in a pan with some olive oil, mm -hmm. onion, uh -huh. a few garlic cloves, right. and once they cook down a little bit, then throw in some cilantro. Right. And it's really quite delicious. You gave me some last time I was here. I haven't forgotten it. It was <laughs> surprisingly delicious. And But mind you, so does this is... <laughs> There's nothing okay. wrong with this. It's just raw without your cooking. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But now, that, that, that gives a flavor. Oh, sometimes we'll throw potatoes in it too. Now, I've got a question with your experience. Uh, right down here, you've got an example of a pad that's dropped down. Right. Uh, has curled up. You've got a fairly nice sandy soil. And it's taken root and it's growing oh, yeah. pads. Yep. And so that's another way of planting them, is just laying the pads on the ground. Yeah, yeah they'll, that, will, that will work. Providing the the pad is um, on soft enough ground. Right, right. Yeah. yeah on, on but I've seen I've ground. seen these things start in some hard pan. It was just amazing to me. The things that I would say about the amount of maintenance that I spend here, uh, I maybe I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive, but I like to keep the weeds out, and I go through this plot here. Uh, probably every two weeks. Yeah, every two weeks I'll go make two passes. I'll do a day and then wait a day and you'll go back because you always miss some. Just hit them with the hoe. Right. Yeah. Uh, I use a hula hoe and okay. uh, or hand. Uh -huh. And uh, I go through to control the worms. Probably. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. A couple the, times a month. The, you've got the Mexican name for the cochineal insect. What's that worm called? The plague. Plaga. <laughs> La Plaga. I think that's a misnomer, but it'll work. Oh, well, it is. And you, you spray it with... Right, I make a... I make the, the Mexican guy that works here, uh, he uses a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and dish soap. I don't know what proportions, but it's probably... Um, probably a half and half, or, probably, yeah, or maybe a little more alcohol yeah, than I've, soap. Yeah. I make up one with neem oil, which is a a uh, water-soluble vegetable oil, uh, and I put a little spearmint oil in it because that tends to repel, uh, gets into the into the pores of the plant and it repels these worms from starting. Um, uh, in the previous video that, that I saw that you sent me, that, that they weren't worried about it. Exactly, a lot of people aren't. And, and uh, I only became concerned because the guy that planted them became concerned about right. them, or he acted concerned about them. Uh, I just don't think that any parasite uh, helps the health of a plant. No, they don't. So it's not a whole lot of maintenance, but you have to be consistent as it is with all farming. You just have go to be a little spray bowl and hit them when you yep, see them. Yeah, yeah. It's not a great burden to, yeah. to grow these things, mm -hmm. but you do have to be out there all year long. It's not like you can let them right. fallow for four months or whatever. Right, 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 right. right. Is yeah. there a favorite that you have? 
Actually, no. I, I really don't. I like both of the ones that are salad oriented and the ones that are that you cook. Right. Even these, if you get them at the right point, like we were talking about, if you get them at the right point, yeah, they're edible raw as well as in yeah. salads. Yeah. But this is what I like to see: plump, healthy plants, because in the spring when they begin to produce the smaller leaves, uh, there will be plenty of them. One thing that uh, that we have not had uh, as uh, a, a, a really reliable market. You go into a place like Smart and Final. They have uh, cactus leaves in, in right. bags, but they're older. Right. They're not real succulent. Yeah. And the market that we're dealing with, that the the lady that cuts the plants, now uh, these are all Mexican people. Right. And they're fussy. Yeah. Cool. And they don't like to trim the plants either. I mean, the, trim the leaves. They like to buy them already trimmed, so all they got to do is cut them up and cook them or do whatever they're going to do with right. them. Right. So, well, does she cut away the edge and get rid of the thorns? Or I don't see any thorns on them, and I don't see a need for cutting the edge. So do, do they just accept them like that? Uh, they, they usually trim the, the edge off. They do. And if there are any that stick up, they trim them. The person that does it all the time, it doesn't take them long. No, sure, 20 seconds, yeah. Yeah, 20 seconds, about 20 seconds a leaf, they can do a leaf. And right, if right, it's a fairly right. large leaf like this one, yeah. then you're getting quite a bit of yeah. product for your effort. I mean, it, you know, it boggles my mind that people have huge food bills. They want fresh, organic, healthy vegetables. And there's this sort of language barrier between America and Mexico that Americans haven't tuned into the enormous benefits of having a few of these in their backyard and just you know without having to do special potting mix or anything else like that I, mean, I know it's, it's so idiot friendly I know. you know I totally no, no, nothing personal <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with you yeah yeah it's amazing so well the 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 human beings are <laughs> Very strange individuals, we, we actually. Follow, yeah. We follow each other. It's a That's weird animal. Yeah. yeah, the herd instinct. Yeah. And if I grew up not doing something, and somebody else is doing something different, then I attempt to make them inappropriate. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's true. Or weird. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's but uh, uh, I, I think that uh, there's a, a phenomenon called group consciousness, and and I think that the more work like this that you do mm. and the more of the videos that can be shown yeah. to pique curiosity. Well, you know, there's another side to it. Growing vegetables is a specialized art and you've got to have all the right ingredients. And so large corporations, food corporations, might not consider this as a viable crop because anyone can do Good. it. Good. Because anyone can do it. That's wonderful. Which I'm is glad even to... more reason why you know permaculture people should adopt it as a, a border fence around their veggie garden yeah, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And uh, it's it just it amazed me when I was looking for super drought tolerant food uh, stuff to realize how many win wins the apuntia has. I mean, I was just stunned because it's just like you could have an, a terrible three year drought. And you can still eat this one when it's been sitting there for three years. Exactly. And it might not taste fantastic, but it's a whole lot better than starvation. And it also has a lot of the minerals and other elements in it, plus the carbohydrate exactly. that you need that we have you, to you have. need to yeah. for sustenance. And, you know, I've, I've said it in another video on Nepalese, but if there's some, you know, say there's a third world war and a foreign power sets off a nuclear device 20 miles above the American continent, immediately we have no electric grid, immediately we have no food delivery trucks, immediately we've still got, you know, 4 million people living in the greater San Diego area. What the heck are they going to eat? Are they all going to go fishing? <laughs> it's not that easy. And so this... No kidding. This is, you know, San Diego City, Tucson, Phoenix, all need to have several hundred acres minimum of fantastic orchards like this as a backup plan, as a contingency plan. And, you know, the so-called wonderful homeland defense, I haven't even woken up to its mir miraculous ability. Well, none of them are farmers. <laughs> Maybe that's it. 
They don't. They, they don't have the a relationship with the soil. Maybe. Yeah. 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 And that's a very good point. If this yeah. if this continues to move forward, I have this whole north side here that was it's going to go into Nopales. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh fantastic. I own clear over to the driveway. Yeah. So yeah, I know. There's well, three quarters of an acre there. So well, it looks like that's a definite probability. Yeah. Well. So that'll bring you up to over an acre. Oh yeah, and yeah. and, and uh, there's this banana group has not been real productive. I'm going to put nopales up there, right? Because what I'm doing is not productive. You need to be another few hundred yards for bananas, I think, away from the coast. Oh, uh, the soil is not good. I mean, yeah. it's sandy soil. It's, it's the these guys love it. The yeah. bananas do not. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Wonderful. Right. Well, you can, you can walk up here. Yeah, that's the. And as I discussed, we put these in probably five months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, just dug a hole and stuck the leaf in. Um, this one has sprouted at least one new leaf. These are thinking about it, <laughs> but this is what it looked like to start, and then three years later. Right. Exactly. Well, I, I put them in pots, and what I've noticed is they, they look just like this when they're doing nothing. And then when I go to move the pot, the You're roots stuck. have gone down through the pot, out into the ground, and they've got a huge root system. <laughs> yep. And, and I realize, oh, I better move them more quickly. Well, that's what would keep something like that from toppling over. Because it, it, is, it, is in the, it is in the ground. I mean, it's not going anywhere. You can right, 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 trip right. on it or whatever. Yeah. It's stuck yeah. in the ground. Because it, it puts roots out like... So so what our viewers need to know is when you plant these, don't give up. They're putting out roots even if they're not putting out pads. And not much might happen for eight months. Right. Exactly. But once now, what about overwatering them? You know, I've never had that problem, so I really can't answer that question. I, I, I don't water any more than I have yeah, to. I think, I think that problem only occurs when you haven't created a scab on the cacti when you planted it. And then the bacteria will get in and right. away, you know. And, but in your case, they've left them in the hot ca California weather for probably three, four weeks before they planted them. Generally, a week's okay. So that's a you know, some of these he may have just whacked them and put them in. Really? Uh, yeah, I saw him. Oh. I saw him do that. Okay. And uh, well, I've been told that's the wrong thing to do. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's possibly it is. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Great. Uh, not every one of them survives, and that might be why. Right, right, right. But uh, you get the majority. You get the majority of of what you put in. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, I I believe, as you just said, that when you're going to work with these cacti, you cut them, let them dry a bit. Right. Three weeks or something of that nature. Yeah. You don't want them to be all shriveled up. Exactly. But you want to have that urge to grow. Yeah, yeah. And I think the the threat of cutting it does that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, I'm happy that they're here. It feels good. I definitely am happy. It tastes good. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to maintain them. I have never fertilized. Right. Okay. I do put we do composting and we do spread the 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 compost out on the ground. Right, right, to break down, yeah. So I, I don't throw too much away in the green waste. Well, I, I'm sure with Karen's magic and your knowledge, this video will inspire many people to, if not plant Napoli orchards, at least get a few Napoli's growing in there. Yeah, garden. and learn how to use them, learn how to cook yeah. with them, uh, yeah. use them in salads and Absolutely. so forth, because it's a it's an extremely healthy food. Exactly. Really healthy. Yeah. Thanks so much. You're more than welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. Mexico has over 200,000 hectares planted for human and animal consumption. This important established successful vegetable crop can greatly lessen starvation in many arid areas of the world. We need to learn to follow the Mexican and Caribbean model.